Hello, no one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Hey, CK. Hey, Daddy. I was just wondering when I could see you again. Give me a call and let me know. Hey, TK, it's Carmen, baby. How are you? I know you're busy, but I miss you, papi. Te quiero ver. Hey, TK. I'm calling you. I was thinking about you. I'm hoping that I get a call back. It's been on my mind. So, um, you know, it's your girl from Detroit. Me back when you get a chance, okay? Talk to you later. What's up, everybody? It's comedian T.K. Kirkland, a.k.a. T to the motherfucking K. T.K. Kirkland is the philosopher. T to the motherfucking K is my philosophy. Marquise, what's up? What's up, man? Oh, how you doing, family? T.K. Kirkland, you on the T.K. Kirkland show. I'm getting you back from your messages from DM me on my Instagram. Right. So what's the situation, fam, that I'm I'm reading? And one, let me apologize for getting back to you late. I know this was like two, three weeks ago, but my ass is a busy man, and everybody's talking about TK. We need you to do more than 15 minutes. And I'm like, shit, a nigga busy. So I'm taking the time to make this shit longer because I'm out here getting money, man. I ain't got time to be in the studio no damn two hours and shit, but... We're going to put it together because I got to give the people what they want. We just watched your drink shop interview, man. You just had me crying laughing, man. <laughs> you one of the best motherfuckers out there, man. You one of the really. Well, thank you, family. And Noriega and my people, for real. And I'm only 24. This coming from a 24 year old. Well, I appreciate and it, fam. Okay, you one of the really things out there. Well, I definitely appreciate it. So, you having a situation, right? with... Your wife is making more money than you? Okay, so I just proposed to her January 2nd. And uh, she, she was already originally working at, uh, like, American Family Insurance. insurance company. Right, now talk it to, the, uh, talk it to your phone more, okay? So you, you're breaking up. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you get down. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, she was already originally working for American Family Insurance, the insurance uh-huh. company. So she was already making good money. But now they offer her uh, another position out in Phoenix, Arizona, which pays double. Right. So I'm just like, damn, I can't have her making more money than me. Like, I mean, for well, some why? niggas that might be okay. I mean, for some niggas that might be okay. Like, if you were, I'm not no bum nigga, though. I just, I don't want my woman to sit on me. I want, I want to be the breadwinner of the house. Right, but let me say, let me say something to you about her. Are you married or you you just your girlfriend right now? You say you got engaged, right? Yeah, we got engaged. January sixth. Okay, Marquise, listen to me very carefully. It's not a competition. <laughs> it's not. No, nah, this is not the fucking Super Bowl. This ain't the NBA Finals. <laughs> this ain't the World <laughs> Series. <laughs> this is real <laughs> life shit. All right, train your mind to think positive. See, the way you thinking, you you a hater. You, you don't hate. Yeah, you hating my nigga because you are you <laughs> making her. She's the enemy because you competing against the woman that lays in bed with you. And what you should be doing is making sure you do the right thing to keep happy. You proposed to her, so that's the right thing. You can't. So you, you, you don't. You don't feel where I'm coming from. You, so if your woman just happened to get bigger than you, 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 you like as your pride, you, you willing to, you can just accept that. Man, like, pride is just that. Mental, pride is just that mental shit in your head. Give me an example. You ready? This is a woman named no. Is a woman named Oprah Winfrey. True. She's married to a nigga named Stedman. <laughs> <laughs> Stedman has played his position for 30-something motherfucking years. You ain't never heard Stedman do any type of crazy shit. You ain't never heard Stedman even tweet on Twitter. And that right. bitch makes... I'm going to call Oprah Winfrey a bitch, but on my show, I'm going to call her a bitch. That bitch makes more money than him. <laughs> now, let's go Beyonce and Jay-Z. Now, you know right. Beyonce make more money than Jay-Z, right? You think so? Nigga. Beyonce makes more money than Jay Z. Yeah, Beyonce bought that nigga a private plane. 
He didn't buy her a private plane. She bought him a private plane. Yeah, I know. So what I'm saying to you is you got to get your mind to stop thinking, yo, I'm in competition with my girl. This is your girl, dog. A woman that right. either has your children or about to have your kids. So oh, you have to be. Yeah, see, so you can't play with that. And the thing is, y'all stuck together forever. So the thing about her, you in character. You say, baby, you could be all the fuck you could be. I'm your biggest cheerleader. And you in character, you make her happy. See, men out here in the world I'll meet a woman and try to destroy her for all her accomplishments. But what you should be doing is praising her more. Now, don't get me wrong. you got some women that can blow the fuck up and try to shit on you. I don't think this woman is that type of person if you propose to her. No. She, All right. She, she sounded just like you. Like, we a team. We a team. It don't matter if I'm making more. It's all going in the same Right. Time. And tonight or Valentine's Day, if I do it Valentine's Day, what I want you to do is fuck her, eat a pussy, and apologize that you even came at her that way. <laughs> I want you to be like, babe, you know what? I really got myself. I had to check myself because I was treating you like you was the competition. And I just want right. you to know I've grown up in the last few weeks because I've been died, I've been chewing on this for a long time, and I came to realize that you are absolutely right. We are a team. And, baby, go, you try your best to own the motherfucking company. Right. That's what right. you got to do for the mother of your children. The woman that you just got engaged to, the woman that you want to be with for the rest of your damn life. Because she's a good girl, and you know these days, that shit hard to find. It's See, hard I'm, to find. I'm the person that can accept that virginity. Like, so I've been with her since she's 13, so. Wow. This, yeah, come on, man. Good. I can't believe I can't believe you thinking like that, fam. This ain't no right. girl you just met but, two years ago. Did you know this girl that long, and you thinking like that? See, because, look, TK, it's always been like this. Before she got the jobs and shit, before she started landing these good jobs, I was always the breadwinner. I was always the nigga that had the money. Right. She needed and you still got the money. You ain't lose your job, did you? No, I still got money. But she make, uh, she make a fucking sack. She make money. Yo, that's beautiful, dog, because one day you might get sick. You might get, break your leg. You might get ill. At least you know you're in the hospital. Your woman can handle everything. She can take care of the kids. You know how many niggas, yeah, if they go down, everybody fucked up. Yeah, yeah. That's, now they're yeah. moving in with their mother or moving with their aunt or moving back in with their children. But you got a woman that's caked the fuck up. She got bags on top of bags, nigga. Bag on top of bag and good. Nobody know her. She a good low-key girl. She yeah. Good, and you don't eat pussy, do you? Oh, yeah. I, she was the first one I ate out. Yeah, yep. you got to eat a pussy every day, nigga, for you because she she won. <laughs> that's her that's her gift, you know. You don't do it hard. You don't do it. Hard. You don't attack. You do it. You don't attack. <laughs> <laughs> you smooth that's with, it. with it. Yeah, that's you with gentle it. with it, you know, and let her hear the smacking sound. <laughs> <laughs> you got to hear the smacking sound. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, man. And then sometimes Fire you got to put a card. This to me. And th listen, you got to do that every day. Then I want you to get a card and start putting it under her pillow. Get a card, put it in her um, glove compartment for achievement. She's going to start glowing on you, fam. Yeah, that's true. And tell her you love her every day. Every day. You tell her, call at work. I said, babe, I didn't want nothing. I just want to tell you I love you. And don't never cheat on her because you would destroy right. her, yo. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't never cheat on her because I know you got another bitch. Well, listen, I cheated on her before we got married in the past. Okay, that's cool. That's fine. You're just <laughs> going through your life experience. You're just going through your life lessons. 
Right. But he posted up some pictures of us getting married. Man, that shit went viral. And it seemed like bitches attracted to me even more now that they see Yeah, but now you got to block them. Let me give you a good example. Let's say, let's say you could see the thing about what men don't have is discipline. So say the right bitch you wanted all your life hit you on Instagram. You're like, oh, this bitch finally got at a nigga. Right. And you fall for the bait. Now she divorces you. I want you to always keep this in your head. She divorces you. You're picking your kids up on the weekend. She opens the door one day. You think it's her, and it's another nigga she fucking. And she said, hey, man. And the nigga say, hey, Marquise, I heard a lot about you. Why don't you come on in and have a seat? <laughs> I'm ready to kill that motherfucking dead. That's my shit again. <laughs> nigga, could you imagine another nigga telling you to come on in and have a seat? And your kids is coming from upstairs and from the backyard. Hey, daddy. Hi, daddy. And you sitting on the couch. But you got to leave. They in there cooking. You see, you see your wife, your ex-wife cooking macaroni and cheese, nigga. Her ass is fat. She's going to get the cranberry juice. And the bitch got a nerve to ask you. I wish you could stay. You want some water? Oh, shit. Yeah, they ain't going to let that hurt my pride. That hurt everything. Yeah, yeah, nigga, I'm gonna be hurt I'm gonna, I can't sit here and lie like, oh, man, I'll be good. Man, I will be hurt. That really. You will be hurt, brother. And this is the thing. Sick. At least I'm giving you a chance to think. Yeah, at least I'm giving you a chance to think about the consequences. Because that's all I do. I make right. people think about the consequences, you know, and you got to have activities. You know what most people don't do in a relationship? They don't have activities. When the last time you went to the park with your kids and played baseball or played basketball? I'm, just to, to, I'm trying to get her to, it's her who's not doing it. Like, I want to go to the movies. I want to go to the park. I want, yeah, you got to insist it. You got to have like a date much. night. Yeah, but listen, even if it's so once much a month. On her weekends off, she just want to lay up and watch movies and shit. She don't really like doing the activities, like you said. Okay, so that's cool. So, but what you do is say, babe, we could take it, but you got to let me take you out at least twice a month. I got to right. say, babe, I love you so much. I want to treat you good. Can, can I take you to a, No, you ain't going to tell her. So we got a, a date, and this is the date. You look on the calendar and say, babe, on this date we're going out, I just want you to know. And you start planning on your calendar throughout the year certain days that you guys go out because you got to get her out the house to let her know she's appreciated. Right. That's right. so I'm important. Taking, you know, trust me, I'm taking in all this advice you give me. I'm yeah, you got to do that. you got to hold her hand and sometimes get in the shower with her. Oh, you want to, yeah. Okay, cool. And why the fuck is it when is it all women can turn the damn shower up that hot? Yeah, that's that the crazy shit, yo. Yeah. Say, bitch, hold <laughs> up. Put the shit in the middle. Let's split us out. We got to split this shit. <laughs> but because she making so much money, nigga, y'all could get two shower heads in the bitch now. True. True, because we got to get it out. See, that's what I'm saying. Now you get two shower heads because she's going to help out. And that shit don't cost that much. Right. We got, a, we, got, we got two bathrooms. She just want me to be in that work. Well, that's a beautiful yeah. thing. Look at, listen to all the positive shit you're saying, yo. She ain't saying, don't yeah, come we, in here. I'm not, dre- I'm not, I'm not ready. Why are you walking in here? <laughs> no, she ain't want to do She want to do every, she, she want to do every damn thing. You got to go to sleep at the same time. Turn the TV off at the same time. Wake up at the oh, same time. Oh, that's nice, yo. Even though that drives you crazy because men can't deal with that shit. Damn, do drive you crazy. Sometimes I ask myself, damn, am I really sure that I'm ready for this shit? Am I really ready well, to get married? Well, what you got to like, do is, you, yeah, you got to have moments to yourself and you'll be okay. Like sometimes you right. got to go hang with the boys. Sometimes you got to go to the that. gym. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't let her take you away. Don't Don't lose yourself. Right. You, you understand? I mean, There's a thing to she told me I was fine. She called me right back in. She did girl text me like, okay, it's been an hour now. Come back in. I'm like, man, what the fuck? Yeah, you got to sit down and talk to her and say, babe, no disrespect. You just got to let me just chill for a minute because it's not that I don't love you. 
at the end of the day, I'm a man, and I just want to go out some time and play basketball. I want to go out some time and just go to the gym. I might just want to go to a movie by myself. You know, I'll call you while I'm there. I just want to go up and sit in the in the back, eat some popcorn, eat some raisinets, and just think about my next yeah. move. Right. Right. Because that's 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 really important for a man not to lose himself, and for a woman not to lose herself too. You gotta have your lanes that you can stay I'm at her peace. And, that, and that's another thing. I'm her only friend. She's the type. She feels like females is phony. They go behind your back. Try that's to true. Man. That's true. She's absolutely right. Hey, I don't need that phone. That's what. She yeah, said. that's absolutely right. So. I'm her but, only so friend. You got to be everything to her, but at the same time, manage your own happiness because what happens in life is that men study women. We study women our whole lives, right? When they make it, when they're mad, we bring them flowers. We got to make sure that we're a gentleman. You never hear a woman studying a man. See, women don't know what makes a man think and how he moves and how he has to have, has his space sometimes or That's true. talking too damn much. Let me shut the fuck <laughs> up. Let me not nag him so much. I'm just talking him to death. Right. That's true. That's definitely true. You know, and this is how some niggas gain weight. This is how some niggas get erectile dysfunction because they get tired of a bitch talking too much. So women who are listening to this, you got to learn how to shut the fuck up. See, most some people are scared of silence, right? You can't right. be scared of silence. Silence sometimes is a beautiful fucking thing because there's really not that much shit you could talk about anyway, you know? And but what's and you the talk sign so much, that, that a woman should look for? What's the sign that a woman should look for that, that means shut the fuck up? I mean, like, okay, you a facial me. expression. What's some sign? Energy, your facial expressions, your energy. Um, sometimes you can just tell them in a nice way, say, baby, can you just give me a moment? I just want to be quiet for a second. I've been talking all day. <laughs> oh, baby, can you be quiet for a second? I got something in mind. No, this fucker's got something in mind. I just don't feel like talking. Then sometimes when she's talking, don't create a conversation by always answering her. Just go, mm-hmm, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. I do that all the time. I have to tell yep. what the fuck you. <laughs> I do that all the time. And I'm yeah, so you're doing the right thing. Oh. Right. Because I'm she trying. talks too damn much. That's yeah, she talks too much. Yeah, and and get out the house as much as you can. I got a good girl, man. She changed me like, shit, I never had a license in my whole life. She helped me get my damn license. Right. My driver's electric together. Like, she, she put me on the straight route because I was just always in the street, but she taught me more about the corporate world, like what well, really. Right, does. and I try yeah, to teach that. If it wasn't for her, mm-hmm. if it wasn't for and her, and I'm glad that you're yeah. saying that because I want more men who are listening, really not to wait till you meet a girlfriend or a wife to get your fucking driver's license. You don't have to meet your girl to get a debit card. This is things. Right. A man should have it. A man should always carry a wallet. You should always have that's a so, wallet with your ID, credit so card. She just gave me a wallet. She she gave me my first fucking wallet. Everything wow. She did it for me. She gave me yeah. my first damn wallet. Like everything. She helped me get my license. She taught me about. Yep. She got me my first credit card. All that shit. All right. See. So yeah. how can you how can you be mad at a woman like that? No, I how can you I mean, compete? I, I know you're not mad, but say, how can you compete with a woman like that? You can't compete. You gotta be thankful for because you got your life together. Right. You have structure, right? You know, but in order for it to last another twenty years until you die, because most people wing it, right? They get together and they try to figure it out, and then they figure out, then they see somebody else because all the mistakes they have. I didn't know that so many people was interested in the way that I think. And when I went on the breakfast club for the first time, I was just truly blown away because people was hitting me from all over the world, Tokyo, Russia, um, Germany. Like, oh, man, TK, the jewel dropper. And I was like, wow. This is really... The same type of problems we got over here. Yeah, people... All we remember, people got the same problems everywhere. It's just the... 
faces are different and the names are different. But when I travel right. this country, it's the same damn situations. And my DM has over 10,000 people asking for help. So with me That's traveling, tough. with so many things got, I got going on in my life, you know, it's a crazy thing, but um, I made it possible. I'm doing my best. I'm going to get to everybody, even if it takes a fucking lifetime, you know. <laughs> and like I said, um, I said, let me give Marquise a call because I saw I was reading it, and I didn't want you to feel uncomfortable about your girl, especially the one you're about to marry, make more money than you. Nigga, you hope she make ten times more than you because you know how many men got to carry a female who don't bring yeah. nothing to the table but pussy? All my exes. Yeah. Yeah, that's my point. And no disrespect All to you women who are listening. I just need you to understand that when you meet a motherfucker that's getting paid for, that you meet a nigga out here grinding and trying to make it right for his family, a woman cannot be a liability. You have to bring something to the fucking table in order for to have stability. It's so important. Yep. Better make out a power couple. Now, see, now that you talk to me, it, it, it's, it's kind of, it's opening my eyes a lot more. Like, yeah, fuck it. We can just be a power couple together. Yeah, just be a power couple. But it's the little things on top of that. Remember flowers. You got to have flowers. Sometimes, sometimes when she come home from work, run to the store, go to, go to Walgreens. Um, what city are you in? Chicago. Chicago. So y'all got the, um, uh, what's the drug stores y'all have out there? Y'all got Walgreens, y'all got CVS. Yeah, we got Walgreens, CVS. Yeah, go there or Walmart and get her some nice bubble bath or bath and body works. And right. get some bubble bath when she come home from work, nigga. You got to be a concierge. This is what niggas do. You <laughs> love your bitch, right? You, let me this finish. another question. You, you know, one second, let me answer this first and we'll go to that. So what you got to do, you got to run her bath water. Make sure it's nice and warm for her, fam. Bubble bath. You put some candles in that motherfucker for her. And when she get in there, you sit on the floor while she's in. You don't get in. Sometimes she's going to want you to get in. Sometimes you just want to chill. And you just right. wash her back and wash her titties, nigga, and wash her underarms and kiss her and just make her feel good. Don't fuck her. Just make her feel good and just dry off, nigga, and go buy her a nice robe. Then when she gets out of the... Out of the shower or tub, she puts the robe on, wraps herself in. Oh, nigga. And rub her feet when she in bed. Three, four times a week. I, I know I got to be ahead of the game. You, I did that. I did that. I bought the robe. I ran the cowboy with the candles. I got to be ahead of the game. I got to be Yeah, you ahead of the game. I did all You ahead of the game. I'm proud of here that you're doing that. A white one. I bought the white robe. I bought the white two. Yep, the know. white robe. I'm proud of oh, myself. nigga. I'm proud of you. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm proud of you. That's another thing. Now, what should I do for Valentine's Day? I'm not sure. Like, okay, you got the ring. Right. I bought you everything else. Like, what more can I? What can I do? Can I you cook? To flowers to work. Can you cook? Edible arrangement. Yeah. You should cook a dinner. Something simple. I'm simple for dinner. Cook a yeah, cook a yeah. dinner with flowers and some champagne. And just cook a dinner, fam. Yeah, that's a gout. Yeah, that's good. See, it's always the simple shit that they really care about. Some niggas right. got to go off loud. The simple thing, like my girl care about. I can't speak for everybody else, but my girl care about the simple things. Right. Just like you said, just a, just a pre, just show her you appreciate it, her working hard, you know, being a good mother. Because you don't find it a lot, especially where we at. You don't see that all. That's real talk, yo. And she working, and she don't gave you three babies? Nigga, you win yep. it. And she got paper, nigga? Yep. And she got motherfucking yep. paper, nigga? You better get on your knees and pray and thank the Lord that you Before got a winner. Me, she never asked me for nothing. I always, everything I ever got, I got on my own. But I, this woman never asked me for anything. She always did it on her own, always. See, so who, whoever her mother is or daddy Raised her right, fam. <laughs> Who raised you? <laughs> Who raised you? And listen to me. It all comes back to that. I don't care 
how shit is around the world, whether you see a person nice or you see a person fucked up on drugs, crack, a good education, scholarships to school, it's based on who raised them. It's, a, it's another thing. Okay. Now, this, this is crazy that you, now that you say that. Her mother, and I'm sorry, baby, if you hear this, but her mother ain't shit. Like, right. They, they do that poor girl so wrong. Like, my girl got a good heart. Like, she, of course, she can't, she can't lie. She don't lie. Like, but her mom just do her so wrong. Like, I don't know if there's something in the past that that they've been through that I don't know about, but I ask her all the time, why you let your mom do that? She, <coughs> her mom literally called her, like, on Friday. What day did you get paid? She got to tell her when she got paid. She got to tell her how much did she get paid. She just takes all that girl's money. And, like, her mother just a money-hungry-ass woman. Like, she just yeah, see, her mom, her mom ain't. Her mom, I'm sorry to interrupt. Her mom ain't shit. Her mom is a manipulator. So what you got to do, what you got to do is convince your wife that as of today, this shit stops. Right. Same thing my cousin was telling me. This shit that stops was, today, How am I going to tell her about her mother? How am I going to say, I can see anybody else, but... That's gonna be kind of hard to say. Like, nah, you, um, I here's the thing about here's the thing about when somebody wants money, you know they're manipulated, especially her mom. If her mom wants a hundred dollars, you tell your wife to tell her you'll give her twenty five. See, so whatever the amount is, you give less than half because you ain't getting it back. Right. See, her because mom wants to talk to her when I'm not around. Her mom know to call her when I'm not around because she could easily right. just manipulate her girl over there and get the money so, right away. Right. Don't pay her so, back. Uh, Never pay her back. Yeah. And know that so she's got free keys. You got to tell your girl she got to stop it. Right. You got to say, baby, I love you. You got to stop it. Matter of fact, you know, I'm going to put this in on one of my shows one day about, um, Hungry ass um, mothers who manipulate their children or think they owe mothers who think their children owe them something. That's fuck, and it's so crazy because she just went for sixteen thousand yesterday at Bingo, and she called her just to splash the money, wave the money around. I mean, she didn't ask to pay her none of the money back. She owed her. She wanted wow. to splash the money, and I was like, that's fucked up. That's and what she said? I was just in the background. Like, that's fucked up, and you know, my wife. I got a sweet wife, like a sweet, innocent wife. She like, do you think that I should ask her for two hundred? I'm like, two hundred. She got sixteen thousand fucking dollars, and you talking about two hundred? Right, like, exactly. Ma, can I have back all the fucking money I got? But because her mom thinks because she brought her in this world, she shouldn't exactly. ask her for shit. I already know how her mom would think. Exactly. Her mom's yeah, gonna exactly. die hard. It's hard death, to believe her mother would do that. Listen to me, her mom's going to die a horrible death. Two things you do. You could either tell your wife to chill, or you could sit back and wait for the mama to die. And when she dies, you just be the only motherfucker in the, in the, in the church, happier than the motherfucker that the hey, bitch is hey, dead hey, and out of your you're life. Hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. Don't believe everybody that's in church yelling, oh, God, oh, God, save me, because she's one of those. She's in church. Oh, Sunday, man. But the church doesn't know she manipulates her daughter. Right. See, they don't know that. She's all in church making it seem like she's the perfect mother. She, mm -hmm. She's giving back our money to the church. They, they, they don't really know what, how, how she is, the person she really is. That's so, crazy. That is, that's another thing. That makes me believe that like, people in church is just hypocrites. Listen now, to me. That's I, a whole other story, but I could tell you it's a lot of them motherfuckers in there. You know, <laughs> just remember when it comes to faith, you, all you got to do is just have faith, pray to whoever you pray to, and keep it moving and love your children and hug your kids every day and tell them that you love them. Tell your wife that you love her. And do the best you can with the mom. I, the philosophy that I have for the mom is just sit back because she's going to die. Exactly. And I've been feeling that way a long time. Yeah, that's going to be dead time. soon. I already know. A slow pain. And what you should do on the low is take life insurance out on the mom. I can do that. For like a million dollars. Yep. You find out her social security number. You put a social security number down. They don't even have to come. They don't even have to come to give the mama a test. You know how the, some people think they get physicals. 
You don't even have to do that no more. You just get a social security right. number, and you can actually sign the mama's name. And send that oh, shit, and you make the and you make the payments on the on the life insurance, and you can do that shit for five, six hundred thousand dollars, and I think it's like um, three hundred something quarterly, every three months. You pay like three hundred uh, something. Yeah. I got all her information. I, I, my wife, this is this shit is crazy. Okay, like my, my wife got her on our account, on our our fucking account. She sees. Oh no, she got to get off dollar. that. Man, she sees every penny we deposit. I don't yeah, know you can't do that, that for him. I, I don't. I don't know what it is. That, that history. I don't know why is this woman so terrified. Yeah, my you, mother. You, I always ask her. She said it's about respect. It's, it's just about respect, but she's not respecting you. Yeah, she got respect. So yeah, it's amazing. How many kids she got? We got three boys, and she knows. Oh, we I thought she. I thought she said she got twenty kids. The mama. Oh hell no. Oh okay. No, the mother. The mother just got uh, two girls and a boy. She got. Three Listen, kids. is there any way you could open up another account without the mom knowing and transfer all the? Uh, my man. I already did it. Yep. I already did and it. Just keep a th- <laughs> yeah, and, just keep, and just keep a thousand dollars in that account the mom is on. Right. That she knows about just a thousand dollars or less. She's gonna be thinking about it. She Say it again. She just won sixteen thousand at bingo yesterday, so she ain't gonna she gonna give her that money gonna be gone money. before the end of the month. That money will be gone before March. Right. And I started to be dirty and running in there and take that shit. <laughs> just off the simple fact that she do her dog. Right, but yeah, you try to stay out of that because that's not your mom. You just, you gotta, you really gotta play a very thin line because if you check the mama too hard, your girl, your future wife might get mad at you. Right, because she right. is manipulated by the mom, right? So you don't want to take that chance. Like, babe, I'm trying to protect you, and the, because the daughter is not going to see it your way. Obviously, she doesn't see it your way already. So the mom has totally brainwashed her since she was a child. That, 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 that's exactly what it is. She brainwashed her. I mean, she, yeah. has, she has enough daughter, but our daughter don't, the other daughter don't take no shit from her. She knows how she is. She don't take no right. shit from her. But my and wife... Daughter, and your wife might feel a little guilty because her, of her success. Because she's successful, right. she feels like she should look out for her mom. Hey. Yep, she's successful, and her mom's going to touch her neck. Right, so she might she might feel a little guilty. Like, let me help my mom out, you know. But that's how a lot of mothers are in the hoods across America. They child makes that's it big, right. you know. And believe it or not, um, what's my man's name? Dominique Wilkins. Yeah. His mother used to do him like that until he got married, and his wife made sure everybody got cut the fuck off. Well, that's it. Good, good, good job, her. God bless her. That, that, that's yeah. crazy that some people like that. I mean, if your child making me, why won't you just be happy? Like, that's that's messed up, man. That's fucked up. Yeah, some things in life you just can't explain. You just got to learn how to play the hand that you dealt. Right. Because, you know, man. you can't. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I'm so glad that you got this this show because like it's a it's a lot of us out here that, that is, you know didn't grow up with no father and we can get this advice from you like I wouldn't take this advice from nobody else especially somebody that's doing more than me I know, right. I know that you you doing good around the world you traveling the country and I don't even have nobody to talk to because I'm doing better than my peers I'm doing better right than I understand around. yeah I definitely understand um, but do what you do is from time to time you take times to encourage other people but don't get into if you see somebody fighting you walk away you see somebody right. getting ready to shoot each other you walk away because i don't want you to be a positive role model i don't want you to be a positive role model and you walk into a bad situation you hear me that's another thing My- you know I- i'll be trying to i'll be trying to be a, a role model you know i'll be trying to uplift motherfuckers i see down because you know, Tupac like my idol. So I, right. You know, I, I followed the shit that he went through, and I know he was a good person. So I was just kind of. He was a good dude. He was one of my friends. Oh, you knew Tupac? I know everybody, fam. Damn, man, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah me and Tupac, Tupac, I used to open up for Tupac, Tupac too back in the day, you know. 
And me and Tupac oh, yeah. did the show down in, this, in Atlanta when Jack the Rapper was popping, when Death Row was at the height of its heyday. Me and Tupac right. were real cool. Me and Snoop, all of us have been cool for years. So Tupac was a good dude. All back when he was with Digital Underground, you know, I used to open up for Digital Underground, too, back in the day. So right. it really turned out to be... Just a great situation, and I'm glad I got to know him. But any young man in their 20s right, who is cool. searching for a father, who is searching for love, who is searching for just connect, he just hooked up with Suge and all of them, and it just took him, inspired him right out. Because when you see him getting in trouble back in the day, so let me ask you a question. Was, let me ask you a question mm-hmm. about two parts. Everything they say about him being so real, can you vouch for that? Or is he or or was he just I don't believe it's real. I believe like in my heart I believe he was one of the realest niggas out there. But you you you've been around him, you actually home around him. No, Tupac wasn't a real nigga. And what I mean by that was Tupac had uh, a gift for writing, a gift for delivering rhymes. But he was only 24. He was trying to find himself as a young man. So he right. was going in circles trying to find himself. And I think that he would have found himself given if he'd have had a lot more time in life. But what happened when Tupac got shot, Tupac created a East Coast, West Coast war between us now. That should not have even happened. Oh, I already said Because he tried to say that. Yeah, well, this is what he did. He tried to say that Puffy and Biggie set him up. And that's not true. And this is what I mean by being young. When you're young, sometimes you lie. Sometimes you put things out there that's not even true. Biggie and Tupac, I mean, Biggie and Puffy had nothing to do with him getting shot. I always tell people, you want to hear... Yeah, let me finish. Okay. If you ever listen to the album Machiavelli, listen to track 11, and the track says, Against All Odds. Yep, and heard. Tupac is telling the story. Let me tell you about a snitch named Haitian Jack. Yep. Haitian Jack was one of my homies because when I was hustling back in the day, um, um, Haitian Jack was one of my connects in New York City. But we never got a chance to do business because my niggas out of Chicago, who was one of my locations, wouldn't send the package, the delivery to Haitian and them because Haitian Jack and them didn't make the, the, make the deposit for the package, for the packages. Months later, a year later, when Machiavelli comes out, I find out that Haitian Jack was a snitch. So oh, if we would have sent this pack, right, so we would have sent this, these packages to Haitian Jack, I would have probably been on federal indictment. Wow, that's shit crazy. True story. Wow. So the thing about all this with Tupac is he was trying to find himself, which most young men do, see, because every man is born with a destiny. And what happens in life, we get sidetracked. You know, we get we get off our path. See, in my situation, I got off my path, and then I got back on my track later after I went through all my adversity, all my obstacles in life. But when I sit back and look at the ceiling and look at the stars and the sky and know about God, this was him teaching me my life lesson. Because he's not going to put too much on you that you can't handle. So now I can tell people certain things because I've been through it. So you can't tell nobody nothing unless you've been through it. And I wouldn't want nobody to go through the shit that I went through. So allow me, you, Marquise, the the listeners of the T.K. Kirkland Show, I feel so great talking to you this long. Let me be your GPS for the rest of my life until my eyes close forever and I could pretty much make everybody successful. Now I'm just trying to do what success is to me. Success okay. to me is that hopefully that one day everybody after listening to my show can have peace of mind. Because okay. peace of mind has nothing to do with money, 
has nothing to do with health. It has a lot to do with health. But to achieve peace of mind is priceless. It's the greatest gift I can give my listeners. It's the greatest gift I can give people who believe in me. It's the greatest gift God has given to me because I had it once, I lost it, and I fought my whole life to get it back, and I got it. And if you hear these hear these people and you have peace of mind and you fall in love or you want to be with someone, make sure you love that person so much that when you hand over this throne, this thing we call peace of mind, you have to truly make sure they are truly worth it because sometimes you don't get a second chance. Sometimes you don't get a third chance. Peace of mind is the ultimate goal in life. Marquise, you got my phone number. Stay in touch with me. Lock it in. Call me anytime. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Marquise out of Chicago. This is the one and only T to the motherfucking K. We bring it to you like nobody else can bring it to you. As they call me around the world, the jewel dropper, the gem dropper, the leg spreader, a.k.a. T to the motherfucking K. May God bless you, Marquise, and may your pain be champagne. Stay in touch with me, Ben. All right, you too, man. Stay safe. Keep okay, Ben. Yes, sir. What's up? And I hope that you enjoyed the show. I want to show mad love to City Gear, Juwan, and Nisha down in Lenox Mall in Atlanta, Georgia. I want to show mad love to my homie up in Cleveland, Ohio, Flo. All right, Jock, keep doing your thing. I want to show mad to love to Exclusive out there also in Atlanta. To all my homeboys beating cases. To all my women holding it down, grinding, keep your head up. May God bless you and may your pain be champagne. Tea to the motherfucking K. Okay, until next time, go. This episode of the TK Kirkland Show was produced by Jonathan Mena, executive produced by Charlemagne the God, music by Lando Beats. This is an official Loudspeakers Network production.